Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we will be learning about storage account security. So, we will be looking at access keys and also shared access signatures and how we can configure them within the portal and within Microsoft Storage Explorer. That's a tool. The first option we have uh, for the securing our storage accounts or access keys. So, let's talk about that. When we when we are referring to the access keys, they are configured by default whenever we create a storage account. So it means, so as soon as you create your storage account, there will be two access keys gets created and configured by default. Let me show you from the Azure portal, if I go back to dashboard or maybe from the all services and then storage accounts and click on your storage account. If you just go back to settings and access keys, you have your key one and key two. So there are two different access keys with equal in permissions. Let's try to understand what we can do with these access keys or what it will allow us to do. And this is where it's quite important to understand what type of privileges these access keys have or this will provide to us when you use an access key you are providing with a root level of access to the complete storage account it belongs to for example if you look at here the storage account concepts a storage account can have different services it can offer like containers tables queues and shades uh, within the containers the most important part would be the blobs which you do have here so if I have access keys I can completely control over the entire storage account it means I will have the full access entire on the storage account or on those concepts and it's really recommended by Microsoft that you shouldn't be using access keys as they are just the two keys and you will have the full access the reason being it will give you the root level access so what what is recommended to be using we can give control over the SAS based but before we jump into the SAS base let's do a demonstration quick demonstration on access keys I've installed as part of this demo Microsoft Storage Explorer and if you're quite new to what exactly this and if you're not familiar with Storage Explorer tool this is a tool that Microsoft provides uh, for us to download across multiple platforms to assist with configuration of management of storage accounts and it also allows us complete configuration of underlying storage services so let's take a look on it so I'll just launch it or I'll just um, if I don't want to launch it I can simply finish and launch from here uh, this would actually launch the tool once the tool is open up you can click on connect icon the connect icon and then we can use the uh, connection of string that was copied from here so I can simply use the connection string uh, which contains including our key one value you see here this is the key one also value has been there so this has everything you no need to again fill the values within the storage account so instead of that I'll simply copy the connection string here that includes my key one access simply I go back here if you want to enter the Azure uh, method like uh, sign in process to the portal and then from there it can also pull but I just wanted to use the connection string because I have a ready-made connection string which was copied from the Azure portal and click on next and all I have to do is simply paste the connection string that would automatically paste here the display name and everything and click on connect and that would actually connect it if you see here well, my storage specific storage account this is the same storage account which is visible here under storage explorer I can simply explore this to get whatever the containers are available if you see here I have a container called my demo containers instance and that's the same container which is coming from our storage account from the Azure portal also so this explains um, this explains that you know not just the blobs you also have the share permissions and queues and tables so you have a full control on entire storage account that was explained within this PowerPoint so entire access can be controlled with either access one key or key two as a best practice we always change the key one key two values when an Azure administrator who leaves our team 
maybe who has the access earlier and also we will not be using the entire access permissions instead we go for a uh, SaaS based so as part of any of the teams within organization you all shouldn't have a root level access on a storage account uh, it's much better practice that our control is limited to only what we need to have access to it let's think about another example what would happen if you had a contractor that started working with you for a short time you need to provide them with access to a certain parts of the storage account for them to assist with management if you don't want them to have access to the blob containers or you don't want them to have access to the file shares uh, that they should only have access to queues or maybe a tables for example so you don't need to give the entire access key so that's not the way to uh, give the full permissions instead we wanted to give them only the required permissions let's say if they just wanted to uh, work on maybe a tables or entities we would be only giving on that the required permissions maybe just for the read or maybe write or maybe delete whatever the explicit permissions we want to grant it we can grant that would be the better way uh, instead of give the entire access uh, with the access keys when we give the access key as we have just seen within the storage account storage explorer you have the full uh, full list of the storage account uh, and you can do anything uh, within the storage concepts at the same time if you are looking for a best practices on your access key uh, you are concerned that someone has access to it that shouldn't have access to it then uh, what we can do within the Azure portal is actually just rotate the keys uh, from this option so that what would happen is this key gets rotated automatically with a new ID will be generated so every time when you rotate new keys will be gets created if you see here d6 is there later point if I just rotate that gets changed so let's say you have given this key to one of the developer and uh, if he has access you can change them by pressing this rotate button that will regenerate the entire key so it's still regenerating if you see here the regeneration of the key is successful with a different key let's try to regenerate for our key to also regeneration of the key is successful what it means is the previous key is gone that means we no longer exist whoever have the old key that they try to connect let's see if I go back here and if I do try to uh, connect it or try to do or upload any of the information let's say uh, here I wanted to upload so it's just gone you are getting an error error as the authentication error if you see here this is gone and you shouldn't be able to you know access anything you are actually getting an error with the authentication if you want to just give some access to only what they require within a storage account let's say just for only container or maybe for tables that's where uh, we will have uh, we will have an option for SaaS based a configuration that will allow us SaaS is a shared access signature and this is a different from a permissions that you allow us to provide for more granular control over what services are accessible and what resources are accessible and the actual permissions that the person who knows the SAS will have access to so now the best way to configure is within the uh, shared access signature is to see in action so we'll so we'll move to Azure portal and see under settings you have the shared access signature or in short SAS we have two types of shared access signature there is an account specific SAS and there is a service SAS let's understand account SAS as well as the service SAS so let's begin with the account SAS account SAS will be more specific to everything that you have within your allowed storage services let's say I just wanted to grant only for the blob I don't want to grant for the file maybe queues tables and if you see here well, the required actions has been automatically taken out and the blog specific for example I wanted to explicitly allow read write delete uh, these permissions I can do it for example I don't want to write but I can read it 
let's say I don't want to create I can grant explicit permissions um, with specific to the permission wise and for the resource type if you see here services container object also I can do it uh, on top of it so here you also have the start and expiry date let's say I wanted this to be performed maybe this access key once we have generated here you will be getting like this so this value i wanted to use maybe in the future uh, let's say i wanted uh, i have maybe a change management uh, process as per that maybe there's a change uh, where i can use this key maybe on a future date i can use that so it doesn't allow you to you know uh, before use until this specific time uh, matches you also have the time zone options where you can uh, choose the required time zone and also you have the whitelisting of IP addresses or the subnet that you can specify here so I let's say I want to just uh, a developer who is connecting from a VPN server only need to allow the access such configurations can be done by granting here allowed IPs and also you can choose the required protocols HTTPS and HTTP so a secured HTTPS is always recommended and you can use key 1 or key 2 based connections uh, let's say I want to generate now based on these like with only blob and services read and list of the content which is inside the blob with the service specific now um, once I generate it I can use this by copying this blob SAS URL and just go back to your uh, storage explorer and connect button so you have the visitor to connect use this SAS URI give the URI name and give here a meaningful name display name like this is maybe for my SAS for a blob and click on next and that would actually connect only the blob so earlier if you we used to get everything including blob file share queues and tables but now this time only containers because we have chosen only for the container specific permission now uh, now we will also uh, take another configuration like files and the blob and the services I want to allow container also I wanted to see including objects and I wanted to um, I don't want create and add but I just want a list but I don't want to lead and write so if I start generating key new key got created here new SAS string so I'll just use the blob one uh, I'll just copy and connect from the connection of the storage explorer I use this SAS specific again and give the URL URI with a specific one which we copied and give a meaningful name here as a description make sure if you have the same name it might not take so I'll just give as a blob this time and click on connect so it got connected and if you see here uh, this is a blob one I do have the file as well as the blob specific only came because this time we have taken only blob and file and I should be able to this time explore even the containers because earlier there was a container permission was not given now this time we have given the container but if I try to upload any of the files let's see what would happen so I'll simply uh, browse my some of the files, maybe a test file let's say this DLL I wanted to upload so if I try to upload I get an error because uh, fail to transfer because insufficient credentials uh, that means it does not have the proper permissions because we don't have a write option but we can read actually that's how it is configured so that's all about the uh, SAS specific you can uh, explore more options based on your requirement but do remember there's a tricky point once you come out of this generation uh, generating of this SAS connection string or uh, the SAS token uh, you don't get this again that means these uh, details gone let's say you have given uh, to your person uh, for unlimited days maybe some specific time so be sure that you should be actually giving till what time they need it and if these keys got compromised it's really a complication so you should be looking to give only to the specific service what if if you want to just grant access to a specific file or a folder that exists on your storage account uh, or a specific service that's where actually services uh, of your SAS comes uh, that's the second type uh, within this lectures what we can do is we can directly open storage explorer within the browser which is integrated or you can actually use the older one 
uh, old mechanism of the Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer. Uh, but this is easy, handy. So I'll just go with the Storage Explorer this time to show you. So if I just explore my blob container, I have a container, also I have a folder within these two different files. Do remember that you cannot uh, you can create a folder but uh, until unless you upload a files inside that folder it will not be visible within Azure that means empty folder doesn't visible but you can create and make the structure readily available so I'll just go inside the hedgehog folder and I just wanted to grant access for only the specific file for that what I can do is I can right click and say that get shared access signature so what happens is this is only one file will be accessible so you can even grant the same permissions and like rewrite create delete also you will have an option for start time and expiry time and also you can generate container level or shared access also so i just want to apply only this and you see here there's no, no access policies we can talk about access policies with respect to shared access signature once we have created this but for now we don't have any templates or we don't have anything has been created any access policies that means once you create here so whatever the uh, whatever the hr specific blob specific uh, access has been granted uh, post to that that means once I copy this connection string or uh, URI it will not be again visible for you that means it's gone the uh, copy paste value so you have to regenerate once again so I'll just close this as since I copied let's also try to work with the shade files uh, within the Azure so I'll just connect it to the file shades I have a demo shade folder and also have a file is already in up uploaded state so what I can do is I can get a shade connection um, with specific to SAS signature I can get it by clicking on it and I can create delete or whatever the permissions I want I can generate it and uh, similarly access policy also none we are gonna look into it in a minute or so uh, access policy is something that you have create once and reuse them that means these keys will be whatever you generated keys will be you are storing somewhere and you can reuse them those keys so that's how it's gonna work so I've just uh, copied the SAS value and then copy paste it here and then click on connect so this time it's gonna only show me the files you see here this is just showing me the value of my uh, file of the terms and conditions file so that's how it's gonna work and let's jump into how to create access policies so that we can reuse them let's try to create access policies for our container so if I just go back to my Azure portal and to the containers and I have a container already so within this container I do have different files as we uh, have seen in a few of the demos now I wanted to apply some access policy this time what I can do is I can simply go to uh, settings and access policies uh, this is where I can apply storage access policies specific or I can also apply specific to the blob storage so let me actually create one SAS uh, specific policy here once I give here an identifier name that's a policy name I can choose here uh, permissions that like read or delete or create or whatever the permissions I wanted uh, let's say I wanted to take all of them and the start date and end date let's say from now to uh, whatever the time zone uh, you are uh, based on that you can configure also or you can expiry date also you can set for this specific policy let's say I want this to be expired in a week time and click on ok that uh, policy has been created so once I click on save button uh, this policy gets saved similarly you can also create for the blob specific uh, storage so I can give your uh, legacy hold or time based you can create if you want retention how many days this policy should be applied and uh, let's say I want to uh, go for the legal hold specific uh, to maybe uh, just a policy has been created for the legal hold and little point what I can do is I can actually go back to the uh, creation of the same uh, within this if I try to again go back to the storage explorer and try to grant some access on any of these now this time if I try to apply uh, maybe this time I would actually getting the specific permissions like uh, get shared access signature this time I should be able to get a policy that can be set here 
you see here I have a continuous has policy which we created so with this I can uh, create so this is going to generate that specific values uh, with that specific so you can use as the governance purpose these kind of you know access policies and the keys will be generated based on that so you can save this key to connect it and you can reuse within the application when it comes to the security with respect to storage accounts not just the access settings you can also go for additional physical layer of encryption by default Microsoft does their all the storage accounts with respect to it that will be encrypted the data but if you have if you want to you know go for advanced level configuration you can do it with the customer managed keys either you can use some of the URI or you can use the a key vault service with specific and you can create a your own as your key vault with a hardware integrated IDs or hardware devices or you can also give your input with respect to as your key vault and use that so that the data will be encrypted whatever the data is getting stored within Microsoft Azure data centers so this is the key value and the key benefit uh, for encryption side also we have uh, five walls and virtual networks where you can configure with respect to where all it is allowed so by default it is allowed for all network instead you can secure with only the vnets that you wanted to allow them or maybe with respect to some of the public IP let's say I'm actually accessing from this IP so I can give only this specific IP will be as a whitelisted so that it can access the storage account and coming back to other and the most useful feature within the storage account in terms of the securing would be the advanced security when you enable ATP advanced threat protection for storage account this actually uh, is a key thing where it's gonna provides an additional layer of security intelligence that detects unusual or potentially harmful attempts to access or exploit storage accounts this layer of protection allows you to address threats without being security expert or uh, managing security monitoring system so this actually all these alerts will go back to is your security center as we talked in another lecture so with the help of advanced security with the threat protection it actually logs all the resources that are read or write or delete requests uh, which are acting to your blob storage for threat detection to investigate these you can actually go and check for the alerts within the security center or you can also read the log, log activities by configuring from the monitoring section under this diagnostic settings by enabling all the logs which we talked in the uh, activity specific logs uh, which we talked under monitoring section this is one of the sample email when you configure your storage account with advanced threat protection it will actually give you an, an email notification with the information about suspicious activity for example here it has given as the unauthorized access that exploit an opening in the firewall legitimate access from a new location could be the possible cause this kind of you know uh, alerts you get it so you get the nature of the anomaly and the storage account name and the event uh, when it happened the time storage type potential causes investigation steps even the remediation steps so all these details will be very useful for you so you can review and you can take an action so just to conclude what we have discussed so far we talked about storage account security concepts within this we we talked about the access keys which are generated by default when we create a storage account there are two different uh, keys will be generated like key one key two and we will actually rotate the keys by regenerating them so that if anybody has these keys which which as a compromise um, we can revoke the permissions by regenerating the keys but the best practice is never use these keys instead go for the service specific uh, to explicitly give the whatever the permissions they needed on a specific 
uh, service of the storage and here uh, the account has is you can have the uh, different access like blob or file or queue or table specific account has so that's the uh, another type within the shared access service so we talked about all these concepts i hope this is useful for you thank you for watching this